Hello, I'm Helen van Rijn, an underwater hockey player and a graduate engineer. One of my biggest achievements of my life was to win the gold at the Underwater Hockey World Championships in 2015. Underwater hockey is an extreme sport and it has been a huge privilege to participate in this weird and wonderful sport for the past 10 years. I've had the privilege to compete internationally in four World Championship tournaments and we were fortunate enough to finish in a podium position every single time. To play underwater hockey, you need a few pieces of equipment, namely a mask, fins, sticks and a puck. Over the past 70 years that underwater hockey has been played, many of these items have evolved quite significantly. For instance, the stick started out as the double-sided sticks that had to be held by two hands, and now we play with sticks basically at the length of a ruler. This allowed the game to change completely as players could introduce new and innovative skills that changed the game. The fins have also changed significantly. The improvement of the fins allowed for the game to become much faster and the players to become more agile. The puck, which is the only piece of equipment used by every single player in the pool, has not changed that much over the years. It started out as a circular disc of the size of a tuna can made from lead. These unprotected pucks damaged the swimming pool floor and led to a protective dampening coating to be added to the puck. Apart from that, however, the pucks have not changed that much. The focus of this project was centered around increasing the speed of the game. I felt that the way to improve the game is to design a puck that would be easier to move through the water and by implication, move faster than the pucks currently in use. When looking at a simplified force balance of a puck traveling through water at free stream conditions, it is clear that the largest force acting in on the puck and slowing it down is the drag force. However, before any conclusions could be made, a thorough investigation had to be performed. My first resort was to turn to literature to find some guidance on how to approach my situation. After performing an extensive literature search, I was not able to find any usable literature on either the fluid flow over a stubby cylinder in the fully turbulent regime or on the underwater hockey puck. This got me quite excited as I realized this was an opportunity to do something innovative. I would have to take the responsibility to conduct the research and find the results I needed myself. I contacted CMAS, the international federation that represents underwater activities in underwater science, sports and underwater sciences. I wanted to know whether they had any documentation about the underwater hockey puck. They sent me a document describing how they chose pucks for the underwater hockey world championships. They specifically looked at cost, durability and puck performance. I decided to do a thorough investigation into the, the performance of the four pucks most commonly used for world championship tournaments. My hope was that this investigation would help me understand what aspects contributed to making a puck a good puck. The four pucks that were selected for the study is the Broody Puck, the can -Am Puck, the Sims Puck and the Orca Puck. Although more qualify for the study, the pucks were limited to these four due to geographical constraints. All four of these pucks have been designed and manufactured in accordance to the regulations set for the puck by CMAS. These regulations specify an acceptable range of widths, diameters and weights for the pucks. These ranges are fairly small and therefore the pucks all look fairly similar. None of them really stand out from the rest. The first step in this investigation was to design and conduct a preference testing experiment. The work was being done for the benefit of the underwater hockey community and it was therefore very important to get the players actively engaged. I assembled a group of 66 underwater hockey players. This group included some of the world's best players and coaches, as well as players that will hopefully become world-class players one day. The players completed an eight minute simulation where they were asked to complete five activities with each of the four pucks and then score the pucks based on the experience and the performance of these pucks. The activity specifically tested the control that players experience during long movements, as seen on this video, and the control experience during short movements, as well as the relative height, distance, and accuracy of the puck's flick. The outcome of the puck preference experiment was a relative performance ranking of the four selected pucks. 
The next step was to send two of these pucks into the wind tunnel and to set up CFD simulations to try and quantitatively explain the results of the qualitative preference tests. The results obtained in the wind tunnel and the CFD confirmed my assumptions that the players preferred a puck with a low drag coefficient. Having identified the main focus of this optimization and improvement of this puck as a drag reduction study of a bluff body at free stream conditions, I was able to go and search for inspiration as to how I would approach this very interesting case. As previously mentioned, no literature could be found that could guide me in the optimization process. So I was forced to think outside the box and to consider possible solutions that have been proved to be successful elsewhere. Throughout my four years of study, we often heard about the development of the golf ball as an example of innovative thinking. I wondered whether it might be possible to do something similar for the underwater hockey puck. The fluid manipulation techniques used for a golf ball revolutionized the game. A turbulent boundary layer is created by adding dimples to the ball. This reduces the drag significantly. It also allows the ball to travel faster, further, and straighter. I decided to try and implement these turbulent boundary layer methods on the puck as well. When looking at the visual representation of the fluid flow over the sims and the orca pucks, it can be seen that the addition of the irregular surface geometry allows for the fluid to follow the geometry for longer and to delay separation. So when taking a closer look, the effects can be seen much more clearly. What is observed here indicated that I was on the right track. I constructed a radial design that I placed on the circular faces of the puck. The implementation of this design not only reduced the surface area that is in contact with the swimming pool floor and, by implication, reducing the friction, but it also created the turbulent boundary layer that I was aiming for. By means of an extensive CFD simulation, the optimized depth of the, this design was determined and different orientations of this design was also tested. This was to ensure that the predicted drag reduction was not just orientation specific. For the circular cross section that resulted from the other configuration, I investigated a few options. Ridges were added at different depths and frequencies to see if the turbulent boundary layer could be induced for this configuration as well. But it turned out that in the fully turbulent fluid regime, a smooth cylinder yielded the lowest drag. However, the drag predicted for this newly designed puck was 3% higher than that of the SIMS puck that was selected as the baseline for optimization. This increase was accepted based on the value of specific trade-offs. By increasing the diameter and decreasing the width of the new puck, a puck, the puck is predicted to fall within the desirable weight range of 1.2 to 1.3 kilograms, while having a smaller frontal area and larger moment of inertia than that of the SIMS puck. Although the main aim of this project was drag reduction, it is of cardinal importance not to lose sight of the overall dynamics of the game. The upright configuration of the final puck was tested in the wind tunnel to determine the effect of the addition of the turbulence inducing design. For a velocity of about 30 meters per second, the SIMS puck had a drag coefficient of 0.34 for the upright configuration. My puck's upright configuration by applying creative, innovative solutions came back with a drag coefficient of only 0.11. By accepting the predicted 3% increase for the flat configuration and using the 67% decrease from the other configuration, my puck's overall drag coefficient is 32% less than that of the SIMS puck. I am very proud of the fact that this innovation could potentially have a significant impact on the game. I believe that the information that I shared with you today has the power to advance my sport by opening up a whole new perspective, maybe because I commercialized this design or that it inspires someone else to design a puck based on these principles. I'm just very happy that I could give back to the sport that gave me the world.